Hello everyone, it's Dr. Sam. I'd like to welcome you to my Eye Clarity Podcast. This is a show that offers cutting edge information on how to improve your vision and overall wellness through holistic methods. I so appreciate you spending part of your day with me. If you have questions, you can send them to hello at drsamburn.com. Now to the latest Eye Clarity episode. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sam and I want to welcome you to Facebook Live tonight. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here and I hope everybody is doing well out there. So before I begin, I want to share, give an announcement that I'm going to be teaching a three-day online workshop in October and this is called the Vision Sanctuary Retreat. I've done this before and it's an online retreat. We're going to be meeting for the weekend. I believe it's uh, the weekend of October 9th, 10th, and 11th. In any case, uh, we'll be putting that up on my web store in the next couple of weeks. So we'll take early registration if you want to sign up. We had a big group the last time I taught this type of workshop. And, you know, one of the things I like to do in the workshops like this, this is more of an advanced intensive, I call it an immersion, is that we want to create enough momentum to create the change that is necessary for you to transform, expand, heal, get better. And once you make that breakthrough, then your eyes and body Uh, know what to do in terms of healing and getting better. So the intensity, the amount of hours we spend, and especially in this immersion, really is effective. I've been doing it a long time. And so uh, I hope you can join me. We'll be putting that out through the newsletter and, and other sources. So we've got a number of questions today, and I want to start in with a very interesting question, something called the Charles Bonnet syndrome. And this is a condition where you actually start getting visual uh, hallucinations. And um, basically, you know, when you start getting these kinds of uh, short things that you know you'll look you'll look out there and you see things like geometric shapes or um, different (laughs) I mean it's kind of weird you see all kinds of you know things that are not normally there and you go what the heck is this well it is a visual impairment and there are many reasons why uh, you could get this kind of visual hallucination Basically, it could be changes in the, uh, the retina itself, for example, macular degeneration. You know, whenever you get macular changes, you start seeing distortions. And in fact, one of the tests that is used by eye doctors is called an Amsler grid. It's basically a grid that you look at. And by doing that, you can see if there's any distortion going on. And if there is, it could be the macula. Another reason why you might get these weird visual hallucinations could be because cataracts are forming. And over the years, I have seen people who've developed different types of cataracts. And of course, I've talked about the many different types and they start to configure on the lens of the eye. And so this creates a distortion in the light actually reaching the retina. And so you can get all kinds of weird Mm, uh, ways to see the world, distortions and warping and things like that. Some other things could be glaucoma. So, you know, glaucoma is called the silent disease. You don't really know you have it, but you start losing your peripheral vision. The the glaucoma syndrome attacks the the optic nerve and the optic nerve helps us in terms of uh, retinal circulation and also the ability 
to maintain a healthy peripheral vision. So sometimes in glaucoma, as your visual field starts to reduce, and this would also go for um, a condition called retinitis pigmentosa, which is a genetic retinal disorder, which also affects the periphery, you can start again getting some hallucinations and things like that. Some other conditions would be diabetic retinopathy, optic neuritis, retinal vein occlusion, um, even things like uh, visual migraines and stroke. So this Charles Bonnet syndrome is very common in the sense that uh, basically you start seeing things that are unfamiliar and you're basically seeing through a distortion in the structure of your eyes, which creates this so-called hallucination. So the thing about it is, is that you want to get it checked out by an eye doctor, make sure there are no tumors, or in fact, you don't have, you know, a stroke going on. Uh, you don't have active diabetes, which could affect the retina. And once you find out, you know, from a disease standpoint, what you have, this is where my content comes in because then you can start doing some integrative holistic things, whether it's natural eye drops like MSM or, you know, maybe doing some kind of a detoxification program or boosting some nutrients or making sure you're absorbing the nutrients that you're taking in, whether it's through foods or supplements. If there's trauma involved, getting some kind of craniosacral or body work, Getting acupuncture can also be helpful in terms of opening up, you know, the, the meridians that support and innervate the eye tissue. So there's definitely a lot of holistic things that you can do. And I just want to assure you that if you've been diagnosed with this Charles Bonnet syndrome, you're basically going to, tr you're going to treat it the same way if you start plugging into many of my contents. So, um, so that's basically what the Charles Bonnet syndrome is. And um, best of luck to you. Thank you for the question. All right, another question I'm getting, this is on TikTok. This is about uh, frankincense, the essential oil frankincense. And the listener has followed me around my lectures with aromatherapy. And he asks, asked me about frankincense in the context of what three essential oils do I use to improve eye circulation and eye health? And I call it the eye protocol. And what it is, is you use three essential oils. The first is fennel or sweet fennel, depending on the company you get it from. The second one is carrot seed. And the third essential oil is frankincense. Now, Depending on the company that you work with, and you know, the aromatherapy industry is huge. In my uh, experience, in my research and working with different companies, I tend to go with companies that are not involved in multi-level marketing. However, I would say that the essential oils of doTERRA and even Young Living are pretty consistent and if you like those essential oils and they work for you, um, I think they're, you know, I think they're definitely fine to use. But I tend to look for smaller uh, boutique companies where the, the owner of the aromatherapy company has personal relationships with farmers and that in terms of getting the essential oil, harvesting it, growing it, that the, the farmers take a look at things like biodynamic farming, the cycles of, you know, the sun and the moon, uh, the soil, and based on climate change, you know, essential oils are coming out differently than they did even two or three years ago. And, you know, they're live. They're basically a live form of the plant based on, you know, what the harvest is. For example, you could use flower essences, uh, flower essential oils like rose or jasmine, and they have a very different energetic signature and function than say something like vetiver, which is from, most of vetiver comes from the grasses of Haiti. That's a very grounding, calming essential oil, but it's very thick. And so you kind of paste it on, you paint it on you, 
where something like rose essential oil you know comes out in a liquid form and of course it's much more expensive because you need a lot of lot more uh, rose petals to make you know a little bit of rose essential oil so all that being said two companies that i like are still point aromatics and lotus garden botanicals i like both of them they are uh, very solid they test their oils uh, I've used both of them personally and with my family and myself and also with my patients. But let's get to the protocol. So remember the three oils I like to use are fennel, carrot seed, and frankincense. So this is where the frankincense question comes in. The first thing to do before you apply the essential oil to, the, to your skin is to do a test patch. And I like to use this area right here. This part of my skin is, you know, it's not that vulnerable so i might take a drop of the the fennel and just you know uh, massage it in here and watch to see if i have any kind of you know reaction or if it's burning or anything like that again there are different schools of thought about application some aromatherapists would say never apply essential oil to your skin directly in my experience if you're able to handle it Actually, you can apply the oil, uh, the essential oil to your skin. You can also use a carrier oil if your skin is very sensitive. So by doing that test patch, that's going to tell you whether or not you can apply it directly to the skin. You know, you can always uh, use a diffuser and um, broadcast it in your space through a, va a vaporization type of uh, situation. And so there, there are other ways that you can apply the essential oils, but for now, the one that I'm gonna talk about is the one where you apply right directly to your face. So you, what I like to do with the essential oils is I'd like to smell them first. That gives me an olfactory connection, and then intuitively I can decide, is this a yes or a no? Maybe I get a no, I go, oh, I don't like the smell of this. Or you go, you know, this, this smells pretty good. Let's, let's go for it. Then you take a drop or two and you can put it, this is where I like you to put it, at the hairline here, over here at the hairline, and then down here. So it's away from the eyes. You don't want to get it around the eyes too closely because they'll burn. So you do sweet fennel and then you smell the carrot seed. You can do a test patch. The carrot seed can be a little warmer and you layer the carrot seed right on top of the sweet fennel or the fennel and then the third is the frankincense okay now once you put those three oils on what I like to do is I like to close my eyes and just kind of go into a, a quiet time for maybe 10 or 15 seconds and I, I notice immediately that there's more circulation I might feel a temperature change I might feel a spreading of the tissue I might feel relaxation my breathing might be deeper and so what this is doing is the essential oils because they're so oxygenating again if you buy it from a company where the essential oil is pure and organic that it's going to start penetrating in and it will start to impact the eye tissue indirectly and i've had hundreds of people say to me when they do this treatment their peripheral vision opens up their eyesight gets clearer and, and you know over time their eyesight actually gets to a higher level of seeing just by using these three essential oils regularly. Now, what's the dosage? One drop of each, layering it on top. And maybe once a day, I would start it there. And if you really wanna go you know, full on, then you could do twice a day, morning and evening. But if you do this for a month, you would definitely see uh, you know, a change. Now, with some people, I would have them do it every other day or every third day. That would be a way that you could titrate it a little more so you get, you know, a little more adjustment period because, you know, there's going to be probably some trigger of detoxification going on. The essential oils, again, if they're pure because of their oxygenating nature, they tend to push toxins out to the skin. You may get a little irritation in, around your face, uh, so that would be another thing to watch for. If you do get some burning, you can use coconut oil and just apply it directly to the essential oils and that will take the burning away immediately. Make sure not to put your oils, you know, 
on your eyes or in your eyes or around your mouth or any other private areas because um, it will sting and burn and they usually only last for maybe a minute or two but uh, again you can use uh, coconut oil as a way to completely just neutralize any stinging and burning but the eye protocol is something I've been using since 2016 and it is really effective so again fennel carrot seed frankincense they work really well together as a way to open up your vision so there you go now there's some people that are asking me web store questions and what I would say is contact hello at drsamburn.com and um, you know my team is usually pretty responsive so ask your question to them if you haven't received your order yet we were overwhelmed with the MSM mist and so I know we've we've been putting it out in waves and I think we just put the last wave out so uh, your patience is appreciated by the way the MSM mist is really fabulous because it's at that 15 percent marker so unlike the MSM drops when you put them in your eyes you get this stinging for about five to seven seconds with the MSM mist you might get it for a second or two but you're getting the same benefits you just spray a couple right around the eyelids so it's going to really impact the eyelids which the eyelids are the source of you know the the tear production and, and so by putting that MSM mist on the outside part it will absorb and penetrate into the eyes but at a slower rate so you won't have the same stinging or burning do that a few times a day it's very therapeutic you can definitely use the MSM mist with contacts so that's totally okay to do remember however that when you put the MSM mist on your eyelids you want to keep your eyes closed but definitely you know you can even use the MSM drops with contacts as well obviously I like using the MSM mist and the eye drops without any lenses I don't wear contacts but um, that that would be my preference at least if you can do that once or twice a day because you're dealing with you know a lens between you and and the eyeball but you certainly can use them all right so somebody is asking Nicole's asking a question I believe what is nasal stepping okay well um, <laughs> there's a there's a couple possible questions here around nasal stepping you know one of the things that I use is something called binasal tapes but I don't think um, I don't think that's what you you mean um, I think what you're talking about is the visual field so in nasal stepping what happens in the visual field is you start to develop different a, a kind of a different layering of what you're able to see so for example you know let's say somebody has glaucoma and you get the visual fields test and you find that in certain areas of your vision based on where the circulation is challenged that the nerve fiber layer that's the layer where you're really accessing you know vision that depending on the damage or the lack of circulation in that part of the retina or that layer of the retina you get a gradient of uh, change in what you're able to see so it could affect things like contrast it could affect light versus dark you know of course when we go into total blindness or total loss the vision becomes black but in nasal stepping what happens is we lose some of our say uh, visual uh, responsiveness in a way where it's not completely dark but maybe there's a discoloration or depending on if we're in a, a light space or a dark space the contrast is going to be different so it all comes down to the circulation and there are some really great things that I suggest if you've got any kind of eye circulation problems number one would be ginkgo ginkgo is really good for vascular health somewhere between 100 120 milligrams 
a day of ginkgo would be really good. Taurine is an amino acid. It's one of my um, ingredients in my eye vitamin along with ginkgo that helps with retinal and optic nerve uh, circulation. The third would be bilberry. That's a famous one. We know that bilberry is really helpful in terms of the retinal capillaries, retinal circulation, oxygenation. I also like the Indian spice saffron. So that's another really great ingredient that helps retinal circulation. And then curcumin. Curcumin has been shown uh, to be able to help improve retinal circulation. And so if you've got nasal stepping, my suggestion would be to really um, uh, help in terms of um, reversing some of the degeneration that's going on. You know, one of my terms I like to use is retinal regeneration instead of retinal degeneration or macular regeneration instead of macular degeneration. And the eyes do have a capability of regenerating one of the new studies that I, I posted on one of my video blogs was the therapeutic value of red light therapy. And there was a study that I talked about uh, by, by Dr. Glenn Jeffries, he's from the UK. And in that study, he found that just a, a short interval of, of being exposed to 670 nanometer red light from a red light box or red light machine, that this would actually, um, could regenerate the retina. And in the study that he did, he found that there was a percentage of people who were exposed to this red light that actually regenerated their eyes and they had better uh, contrast sensitivity. So the bottom line is light therapy can also help with your retinal degeneration. Red light therapy is something you could take a look at. You can find it. I, I did a written blog, um, I think the healing hue of red, you could find that that's something I wrote out, or you could look at some of my video blogs and even some of my podcasts. I think I just recently did a podcast on the value of red light. All right, Kimberly is going to ask a question about MSM drops, the dog and cataract. So I'm not a veterinarian. And so I want to do a disclaimer here. But what I will say a couple things, there is a a homeopathic eye drop called Cinerary Mar Cineraria Maritima. Cineraria Maritima. You can Google it, and it's a homeopathic eye drop that sometimes can work to improve lens health. So you can take a look at that and see if you want to use that for your dog. MSM drops by themselves do not reverse cataracts. MSM drops are collagen creators. They help in the uh, moisturization and um, moisturization and lubrication of the eyes, but they don't necessarily help in lens health. Now, what MSM does do is it creates more absorbability of the cornea. So when you use that second eye drop, whether it's Cineraria maritima, another one is Can C, these would be possible. Uh, protocols. Another important ingredient is glutathione. So glutathione uh, and vitamin C are really important for lens health. You know, there's a really great colleague of mine, holistic veterinarian. Her name is Dr. D. Blanco, drdblanco.com. Check her out. She is one of my friends and she is cutting edge in terms of holistic veterinary medicine. She teaches courses. She's got great products. So Kimberly, check her out. Dr. D. Blanco, B-L-A-N-C-O. She could definitely help you. All right, Nadia is, at, Nadia is asking a question about Graves' disease. So whenever we're dealing with the thyroid, um, it's going to affect our, our eyes, especially in terms of eye lubrication, where do we get a bulging of the eyes like exophthalmus or just a swollenness in the eyelids or we can get uh, just dry eye, the, the cornea is drying out. You know, the thing with Graves' disease is, is that there, there are two things that I, I, would, I think that are very important for you. Number one would be your overall body inflammation and how that imp impacts your eyes. Because body inflammation, gut inflammation is going to affect eye inflammation. 
So working with a functional medicine doctor or a naturopath, it really starts with the gut. And even though, you know, I would say I'm probably more of a naturopathic eye doctor, I tend to look at the systemic and metabolic reasons why we develop eye conditions and eye symptoms. A second factor involved is in terms of what we're eating, going more to an anti-inflammatory diet. You know, one of my go-tos is just doing a week of celery juice. So just celery juice with lemon in the morning. You can put it in your Vitamix. That is a very alkalinizing drink that actually can help reduce dry eye. I've seen it, I've used it. And so uh, that would be another thing. Now, natural eye drops are critical, so you don't wanna go to the pharmacy and you know use their eye drops because they're gonna dry your eyes out even more. I like using the homeopathic opti optique eye drops by Boron, coupled with the 5% MSM eye drops that's during the day. And I would be liberal using those four to six times a day and then in the evening, you could do a castor oil eye massage just on the eyelids. That can be very beneficial. You could do an eye bright tea compress uh, as another option. You could use a helichrysum essential oil hydrosol where you could spray it. You could also use my MSM mist. So you need to keep your eyes really hydrated so they don't get dry. It's like you have to do a loading dose of that. I would make sure you're getting enough omega-3 and healthy fats and oils. Studies have shown how healthy fats and oils may reduce some of the symptoms of dry eye. Estrogen levels, high or low, can also be a contributing factor. Staring at your screen all day, getting some blue light protection, either with a, a screen on your, your digital device or blue blocking glasses, and maybe some of my eye exercises. I think it's a combination of doing some of these natural holistic things with your eyes and then working with a naturopath to see if, if you can begin to support the thyroid better. And so when you're feeling pressure in the back of the eye, it may or may not be related to the Graves disease. It could be, but it also could be muscular. Usually when you feel pressure, it's more of a muscular situation. So then you're looking at the, if you wear a prescription, are you straining with your eyes? And this is where my physical eye therapy exercises come in. The one I would suggest for you would be the Palm Hum. You can find that readily uh, if you Google it, Palm Hum Dr. Byrne, and start doing that maybe four to five times a day. You'll do it once and you'll go, oh, my eyes feel less, less pressurized and they'll feel moister. So it's a, it's a stress reducer. And one of the things that our eyes are really good at, good or bad or indifferent, is we absorb stress in our eyes, but we don't know how to discharge the stress. And muscularly, when we start absorbing so much stress in the muscles, we start getting pains, we start getting um, you know, weird sensations there, and we think there's some eye disease or something, and it's good to get that checked out, but usually it's nothing more than muscular problems. Okay, so Laurie is asking about um, cupping. Um, this is around the optic nerve. Yeah, I, I understand, yeah, Laurie. Um, so the thing with cupping is, in terms of diagnosing glaucoma, there's three main things. First of all, you look at the eye pressure. Second of all, you look at the visual fields. And third of all, you look at the optic nerve. And when the doctor is saying cupping, What's happening is the optic nerve is enlarging. It's getting bigger. And so what's happening is that as it gets abnormally larger, it starts to impinge on the, the uh, nerve fibers that are running from the nerve in the eye back to the brain. So it's impinging on the circulation. And this is what creates a reduction in the, uh, you know, the peripheral vision. So, you know, just because you do have cupping doesn't necessarily mean you have glaucoma, but what it means is that it's a wake-up call that you need to bring much more circulation to your optic nerve in your eyes. So, optic nerves need omega-3 fatty acids. That's so important, healthy fats and oils. As I said before, ginkgo and taurine, you can get this from my eye vitamin, uh, lutein, zeaxanthin, and astaxanthin. So those are, would be 
some things I would suggest. Any inflammation that you have in your body, you need to get rid of. You need to somehow reduce inflammation. Maybe getting some acupuncture could be helpful. If you've had any head traumas, uh, I would suggest some craniosacral therapy. Um, on my uh, many of my blogs, I talk about color therapy. So again, there's the red light therapy, but there's also doing regular color therapy on your eyes where you're looking at more of the cooling colors, which can also open up the circulation. Lymphatic health is another thing that you can do. Lymph drainage, jumping on a rebounder, walking regularly every day. So lymphatic health is very important also. You're going to have to go outside to alternative practitioners to help you with the circulation because what the ophthalmologist is really good at is measuring and taking the, the picture of the data, but in terms of treatment, it's, it's, if it's not lined up with you, then you have to go to these alternative practitioners who can help you with the circulation and then just keep consuming my stuff. Uh, so uh, if you do that, and can the optic nerve regenerate? Well, it depends on the state of the tissue. You know, you can regenerate it, we do talk about neuroplasticity, that action. And even as we get older, there is a neuroplasticity capability that we all fall under, but we have to keep feeding our eyes with, with nutrients and new experiences and new visual, you know, visual things that we're doing. Because if we do the same visual thing over and over again, that's called a closed system, that's definitely gonna create deterioration. Uh, so, um, keep in touch with me about it. Uh, it's a really good question. All right, Brittany is asking, what do I know about EBV and what do I know about CMV? Well, um, so it sounds like you're talking about Epstein-Barr and there's a retinal vascular, or retinal, we'll, we'll call it retinal, um, inflammation and then uh, the CMV is another retina situation. So, you know, you're talking a lot about, um, again, circulation. And one of the things that uh, I've discovered over the years is vitamin D. And vitamin D is more than a vitamin. It's actually a pro-hormone. And it's really important in terms of our immune health. And I think in some cases, it's been underestimated in terms of the value of vitamin D. And in fact, I did a couple of video blogs on people who suffer autoimmune disease based on you know being exposed to different viruses and things like that. And one of the techniques is using higher levels of vitamin D to start to reduce the autoimmune experience or the immune response. And so this started to really take take form after COVID came in because you know some of the doctors started looking at well what are some of the immune boosting things that we can do and vitamin D was one of those things that um, came on the radar especially more in the functional medicine holistic uh, physician arena the some of the study groups I'm in that vitamin D is is super important now the thing with floaters. Again, this is a collagen issue in the vitreous gel sac. So you've got to think collagen creation. The first thing that comes to mind are the MSM eye drops, definitely. I might even do some MSM systemically if you're dealing with body inflammation. Uh, your trace mineral levels are really critical. So things like magnesium and selenium, then the master antioxidant glutathione, which is also very important for immune health as well as eye health. But the MSM eye drops can work very well supporting vitreous health. And, um, you know, I think maybe contact me and I can give you some more ideas. But just generally speaking, I think that those are some of the things you could do both topically with the MSM drops and then systemically to support um, your immune health more. All right, with keratoconus, this is a a corneal dystrophy, the cornea begins to bulge out like a cone. There is, uh, in many cases, a genetic predisposition, but whatever is going on, the cornea is 
made up of collagen and it needs hydration. And so if you are suffering keratoconus, first of all, you want to get diagnosed and make sure it is what you have. And then at that point, you know, if you can get a correction either through glasses or contacts as best as you can, uh, especially if you wear contact lenses, sometimes you can slow down the progression of keratoconus and then start using more of the natural eye drops because the cornea needs hydration. So this would be things like MSM eye drops, optique uh, eye drops, the homeopathic, possibly the castor oil eye massage in the evening. Vitamin B is very important for the cornea as well as vitamin A. And then you have to take a look at, are you absorbing the fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A? So if you have challenges in your liver or gallbladder, the liver produces bile, it's stored in the gallbladder, but if you're not producing enough bile or storing it, bile is what helps you uh, absorb the vitamin A. So you may need to do a supplement of bile salts to help you absorb the vitamin A. So that's another thing. You could do vitamin A eye drops, you could do vitamin A ointment. These are things that can also feed the cornea. Um, and then visual stress is another issue. Probably, I would say in the keratoconus case, if you're light sensitive, definitely use sunglasses outdoors. Make sure you use blue blocking glasses for all your screen time. And then doing some of my eye exercises that help reduce visual stress. All right, everybody, I'm going to need to go, but I want to thank you so much for your uh, contributions and and the participation. I'm going to be off for the next two weeks. I'm doing some traveling, but I will be back in mid-June, probably, I guess, June 22nd, but I'll send you announcements on that. So uh, in the meantime, I really am grateful to all of you for uh, your participation. Spread the word if you can, and I wish everybody good vision. Take care. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something from the Eye Clarity podcast show today. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Spotify and leave a review. See you here next time.